Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be using Scrapey and what we're going to do is we're going to scrape the category URLs from the front of a website, the front page, and then we're going to use Scrapey to follow all of those links and then get the data from behind them. So it's an online store and we're going to go through each category uh, and get the products from there. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to start a project. I have my virtual environment uh, up and running. I strongly recommend you use a virtual environment when you're using Scrapey. Uh, and I've got Scrapey pip installed. So I'm gonna do a Scrapey start project. And this is a fake plants website. So we're gonna call it fake plants. And we can see that it's saying that we've done that there. And it's telling us to CD into our new project and then use Scrapey gen spider and we're going to call this plants and it's fake-plants.co.uk um, as we can see just by following this along here uh, we're going to basically use the default um, template for a spider and we're going to create it that way so now what i want to do is i'm going to open this up in vs code and we're going to be able to see our spider is open here um, don't worry, I'll make it so we can see this nice and easy when I actually start coding. So now we want to go ahead and check out the website. I'm actually going to move this out of the way so we have this here. Uh, here it is, and we can see that if I scroll down that we have these categories all here. So the idea is that we're going to scrape this main page to start with with Scrapey, and it's going to find all these category links and then go to each one and then scrape the products. So if I open one of them up, you can see behind it, it has the products here. Um, we're basically going to focus on that part of how to do it. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to get loads of information. I'm not going to go any deeper, although you could. And I'm not going to use item or item loader in this case because we're going to keep it really, really simple with the data that we are getting out. If you want to know a bit more about that, I have my Scrapey for Beginners video, which will help you out with a lot more of the detail on this. And also the item and the item loaders video, which if you're doing a slightly more serious Scrapey project or even one that you should you want to run more often, I would definitely recommend that you use that. Whereas in this video, as I said, I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab this URL and I'm going to go back to my terminal. I'm going to clear this up and we're going to use the Scrapey shell to find out how we're going to access all this data. So we do Scrapey shell and then we give it the URL that we are looking for. Now, if for whatever reason, when you try and do this, you don't get any data back, a good thing you can do is add in the extra user agent. And how you'd want to do that is in between uh, shell and the URL, you do dash S and then you do user agent is equal to like that. And then you put your user agent in this string here, but I don't need to do that for this one. I don't think so I'm going to hit enter and we can see that we get some 200 responses in the middle of the screen, which is great. So now I can actually manipulate the response from that web page. And this is really cool because you can just mess around with it and, and pass what information you want. And it's only made one request. So what we can do is we can do response to access our response. Let's try and make this a bit, let's make this a couple bigger. Response, okay, we can see we are 200. And now I'm going to be using the CSS selector. So I do .css. And this is where we're going to put our CSS selector. So if I go back to the website and inspect the element, uh, we can go ahead and just hover over some of this category thing. And if I make this big at the bottom, we can see all of the categories here under these LI class product category product first, etc., etc., etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my CSS selectors to access a list a list item with a class of product category and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a space and then an A to reference here this A tag because this has the URL that I want. So I'm going to copy this first back to the shell and it was an LI tag and this was the um, class. We use a dot for a class when we're doing CSS selectors. If you want to learn more about CSS selectors, I've got a video on those as well, which I'll link somewhere down below or wherever. I'm going to remove this last part because that's, I'm happy that it's going to match. And I'm going to do A, and then we want to access the attribute. So we use the double colon and the ATTR for the attribute because we want the href from this. That's where the URL is. So now if I hit enter, we can see that we've got a load of data back and that means that it's worked. But what we need to do now is just double check and we'll do dot get at the end of the first one. 
like this and we can see that it's returned a link now dot get will just return the first item that it finds get all will return all of them and there's all the product links all of the category links sorry that we need so what i need to do is i'm going to copy this one without the dot get on the end because we're going to do that afterwards and then go back to my code and after my uh, class uh, setup here we're going to use this pass function here and i'm going to say that um, this is where the links are. So basically how this is going to work is that we're going to use this pass function on the main page to get all the category links. And then we're gonna yield out of it a request to follow each of those links. Now with Scrapey, yield, which is like return, you can either yield an item or you can yield a request. And in this case, we wanna yield a request, so I don't need this pass anymore. So what I'm gonna do is because I know that this is going to be a list, we're gonna loop through it. So I'm gonna do for link in and our response.css, blah, 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 blah. And now we're going to yield a, a request. So we can say response.follow. So we're basically saying that we're gonna follow that and what we're we going to follow our link and we need to do dot get because remember we have to get the information which we took off here for get all get get and get all and now this part is where we want to add in a callback so a callback is basically where we get to that page it follows this link and it wants to do something now if we don't put a callback in there it will just go to that page and all we'll see is the response uh the status code response which hopefully be 200, but it won't actually do anything. So what we wanna do now is wanna say callback is equal to, now we need to do self because we are basically within a class, and then we need to add a uh, new function name here. So I'm gonna call this pass categories. So that's basically our first one done. So all it's gonna do is it's going to go and get all those links that we just looked at in the shell, and it's gonna loop through them, and it's going to follow it. And then it's going to say, right, now I need to go back to and get this pass categories function. So we need to create this. If we don't create it, we're going to get an error. So I'm going to say define pass categories. We need to do self because we are in this class, so it needs to reference itself. And we want to access the response that's going to come back from this uh, follow the link here. Now, this is where we need to get the actual item information from. So I'm going to go back to the website quickly. I'm going to go here where the uh, actual category page is, the URL. I'm going to inspect the element again, and we're going to go ahead and just hover over the information. You can see it all there. And down here, you can see that there is this div class astro dash shop summary wrap. And that is the one that has the information in. So I'm going to grab the category, the name of the product, and the price. Uh, again, this is not about the information. This is about the process. So what we're going to do is I'm going to copy that. And now I'm going to go back to my shell. I'm going to stay, create a new shell because we need to actually get the new URL, the actual new, the new URL. So we need to copy that first. And we're going to go scrape your shell and to the category URLs, the each, which is each one of these we're going to loop through with our code. I'm going to hit enter. That's all going to come up. Hopefully we get a 200, which we do. I can see them there. Great. So now I can copy my div class and we can go response.css and it was a div and we can paste our class in. And there we go. We can see that it's got all the information up. So again, if I do dot get for the first one, we can just look at the very, very first one on that list. And you can see here that we have this information here. So all of this is now going to be available to us to access. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that there. And I'm gonna go back to the front and I'm gonna store this in a variable product is equal to response.css. Now we don't wanna do dot get first because we want to save this as a save this into this variable as a CSS object so we can actually access the parts within it as opposed to the text. And now we can do product.css. And if you look here, we can see there's the uh, span class with the category, so fake plant there. So this is the class for the category. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna say that is a span and we're going to paste that there and we want the text from this 
And now I'm going to do dot get so we only get the first one just to check that it works, which it does. And I think I can put dot strip on the end to remove the white space, which we can. That's good. So I'm going to leave that in my uh, shell history so we can copy that because we're going to want that in a minute. The next thing we want to do is the same for the uh, product name. So product.css. Now the product name is here, product title. So I'm going to say this is an H2 with this class here. So we're going to grab that H2 dot that. Again, we want the text dot get and we may as well do dot strip as well. There we go. And the final one is the price. Now we can see that there's quite a few um, elements that reference a price. But what I can see here is that there's this span and we can see that that ends right at the end. And then there's another one. And then there's this BDI tag. So if I hover over and highlight all of this BDI tag, we can see that the price, which is conveniently off half of the screen, 54.99, has actually inside this BDI tag, but it's got a span class in it with the symbol for the currency. Now, I almost always remove the currency symbol anyway because I want my prices to be an actual number. So when I export them, uh, I can just treat them as a number or even with my code. So what we can do is we can just do product.css and we can just say bdi and text.get because it's going to ignore the span class within it because we haven't asked for that. So that's a nice and easy way. So there's our three bits of information. So uh, the first one, the info is all in here. So we don't want the dot .get on this because we want all of it as an op CSS object. So I'm going to copy that back to our code. And now we can say products is equal to, there we go. And now we'll just do for item, actually we'll do product. That makes more sense for product in products. I want to loop through each one and let's actually do this bit first. So as I said before with yield, here we're yielding a response.follow, which is a request. But here we want to yield a response, uh, sorry, an item, and that's going to be a dictionary. And now I'm going to say, let's do the name first, and then the uh, category, and then the price. That should be fine. Price. So this is the information that we've already just been through. So this was product.css with the dot get, which we need. Actually, this is this one because we want the dot strip on the end. So let's copy that to the code. And in our name, we're going to paste that in there. And we'll do that the same with the other ones. Category. And then the same with the price one paste that in there let's move that out of the way so you can see past my head in the corner and we are basically yielding a dictionary with the name the category and the price which is the information we just got from the shell so i think we're good to give this a go now i'm going to save that we're going to go back to our shell but i'm going to exit out of the scrapey shell and we're going to do scrapey crawl and it was called plants now I'm just going to do a quick test and we're going to see if we get any errors before I start writing to a file and we should be starting to see product information flick by which it looks like it is. So I'm going to actually just stop that now and we're going to run it again and we're going to do dash o and we're going to call this plants dot uh, let's do a csv file and I'm going to let that run and go through all of those and we'll Come back at the end once it's got all the information. So Scrapey's finished and we can see the item scrape count is 577. So if I go back to my folder on my VS Code and open up the plants CSV file, we have the name, the category and the price. And I've actually looks like I've got that the wrong way around. So I've got the category one into the name. Yes. So you kind of you, you get the point. I've just got the I've got the titles the wrong way around. This should be the name here and this is the category. Oh well, never mind. Just ignore that for now. Here, I'll do it manually. There we go. Solve that problem. 
And if I just zoom out one more, we can see that we've got the prices on the end. So we can see that we've got all these categories and all these products that are associated to it uh, and all the prices. And I think we actually ended up with 577 items, um, which was pretty cool. So that's uh, quite a good way to do it. Just remember when you create your functions in Scraper, you can either yield a request or a response. If these pages for the categories had pagination, maybe some of them did, I didn't check through properly. You could actually then add in your if statement so it follows all the pages for each one as you go through. So you can start to build up quite a large sort of crawl, crawling type spider, I suppose, if you like. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and got some value out of it. If you feel like you have, drop me a comment below. And, I'll, and as always, subscribe if you're interested. I've got loads of web scraping content on my channel and more to come. And so uh, see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.